Now, as Braves fans and baseball fans who just love watching the game, like me, we're going to turn in or tune in every single night. That's just a given. It, it's who we are. We love, if you're listening to this podcast, you most likely love Braves baseball. And so you are watching every single night, although I have had several in the comments here lately that tell me they don't watch the games anymore. They just look at the box score or they listen to this podcast afterwards, which thank you for still listening, even with how bad this team has been lately. But for the most part, I think those listening to this podcast, what Jeffrey Humphreys every day or likes to call true Braves fans, you're watching every day or you're at least paying attention every day. And that's just who we are. We're going to. At the same time, uh, watching the past couple of weeks, I just keep having this thought that this team is unwatchable at times. Like if I were not a diehard Braves fan, if I were not just a a diehard baseball fan who realizes we only got three weeks left and then it's going to be cold winters, even down here in the South, it feels cold when there's no baseball around. And we're going to be wishing we could watch this unwatchable offense. But man, it is just, it is tough to turn on a Braves game right now i was at the game on sunday look it was a beautiful day a great concert after the game a great win walk off even brian snicker said it after the game that's hard it was a hard game to go through it was tough to watch this offense just makes it so hard to watch this team and you know so recently again like i said i've been thinking well, what are you watching on a nightly basis and this this thought, like I said, it's been going through my mind for weeks now and kind of bringing up this episode and bringing up this thought to fans and, and listeners about who do you get excited about on this team? And then I go to the game on Sunday and look, maybe it's one of those situations where, you know, you buy a car and then suddenly you're recognizing that car everywhere that you go. You're seeing it on the road. You're seeing it at the doctor's office. You're seeing that car everywhere now. You never saw it before, but you do now. But when I went to the game on Sunday, all I saw were Riley jerseys, Aussie jerseys, Strider jerseys, <laughs> Acuna jerseys, obviously, were the most that I saw there. And it's just suddenly you realize you're missing the most exciting part of this team. I talked about it a lot last year. I said it multiple times, several times. Acuna, you cannot miss an at-bat. Strider, you cannot miss a start. Who do you say that about right now? Who Who's at bat you just can't miss? You know, Ozuna's been one of the best players or has been the best player offensively for the Braves this year. I'm still not running to the TV to see Ozuna. Uh, Olsen, I think, is the only guy, and I know a lot of people disagree with me on this, but he's still maybe the one guy, maybe just because I, I am rooting so hard for him to do well because I want him to do well. Obviously, I want all the Braves players to do well. But he's still the one guy when they come to the plate, I'm thinking, man, if he can just square it up, he's got the ability to crush one. And he still just gives me that feeling when he comes to the plate that he is about to get a hold of one. Hasn't happened as much this year as I would like, but he's maybe the one guy in this lineup that when they come to the plate, I'm like, okay, uh, let me focus up a little bit here, see if he can get a hold of one and do something special. There's really not anybody else in this lineup I can say that about. I think normally you would say it about Michael Harris, but he's had a rough season and he's had a, a rough stretch since coming back. He's batting leadoff for this team despite having an on-base percentage under 260 in his last 30 days. It's just there's not really anybody in this lineup that you can get excited about. And again, I'm at the game on Sunday, and it's just you see all these Acuna jerseys. You see all these Ozzy Albies jerseys. I see Ozzy Albie there, Ozzy Albies there in the dugout. You see all these Austin Riley jerseys. I go in the, the team store, and you see all this Spencer Strider gear all over the place and it just hits you you're missing the most exciting parts of this team and it just it it stinks <laughs> for for Braves fans that you're you're going through this year and you're missing those exciting guys and there's just not really much left for you to get too excited about they play pre-game videos they play hype videos during the game you know you go into that ninth inning where you're trying to spark a rally and you play that video most of those clips are of those guys who are missing. <laughs> and it just, again, is a reminder of how much the Braves have missed. Now, I don't think that is completely the reason and excuse for why this offense has been as bad as it has been. It's a reason why the Braves aren't scoring five, six, seven runs a game like they did last year, but it's not an excuse for them scoring 
zero, one, two runs a game against teams like the Reds and the White Sox. You know, it, it's just, again, it, it's just frustrating. It's a frustrating season that we're going for. And clearly, you know, the answer to the question is you're going to watch, you're tuning in every night to watch the pitching because the pitching has been excellent. But I feel like most fans tune in, they want to see an offensive performance. You know, they want to see somebody come to the plate that you got to run to the TV or you got to pause it to make sure you don't miss it after you put the kids to bed. It's just, there's nobody like that right now on this Braves team, for me at least. You know, the pitching staff, certainly. Chris Sale, I was glad to be able to go to a game. I've only been to a couple of games this year. I was thankful that I got to see Chris Sale in one of those because he is much wa must watch. You know, Schwellenbach's been fun as the new story this year. He is certainly somebody you tune in to watch. Max Freed, I enjoy watching him pitch because it's just, it's a different type of pitcher. Somebody that can throw so many different pitches and just works so much differently than what we're used to in, in today's game. Ronaldo Lopez has been great. I'll be honest. Maybe it's just my feeling. He's not exciting to watch <laughs> for whatever reason. I mean, it's, it's fastball slider, which seems hypocritical to say because that's what Spencer Strider is. But, you know, it's 95, 96. Every now and then can pump it up to 98. It's just, I don't know, that's just my personal take. It's not exciting to watch. I like watching him pitch because he does good. And then, obviously, Iglesias is fun to watch. And when he pitches, that usually means the Braves are either winning or have a good chance to win. But what else is there? And I'll take some of your comments real quickly. Uh, Joe, me, VG, Momster, and Eros, and others also all mention Michael Harris's defense. And I can fully get on board with this one as somebody who loves defense, and I certainly will tune in for defense. So I grew up watching Ozzy Albies. Anytime that they were playing the Cubs or the Braves, they were on WGN, TBS. I was watching the Cardinals because I loved watching Ozzy Smith. I might have said Ozzy Albies. I meant Ozzy Smith, obviously, uh, with the defense. One of my favorite players, or my favorite player growing up. I love the defense, and I certainly get that. But as a fan, when you're tuning, turning on a, a game, and you're not saying, okay, when's this big defensive play for Michael Harris going to come? It might not come tonight. He might have, not have a ball you know, hit to him that night. You just you don't know that, and maybe that's part of the excitement of it. You don't know when it's coming, and then when it comes, it's, it's that thrill of excitement. So I do agree with that. I had several. That might have been one of the most – comments that I got was Michael Harris's defense. So I can certainly get on board with that. I David 10 says Jared Kelnick is his favorite player to watch and thinks he could come up with some clutch hits. You're a Jared Kelnick fan. I, I will say that uh, good on you. Bully the books is excited watching the replacement players as they're a big fan of the underdog story. I, I buy that too. And I think that's part of the fun. You know, what can Urshela do? I'm having a lot of fun watching Whit Merrifield. You know, what can Luke Williams do? Eli White, does he finally get a chance? What does he able to do with that. There is some excitement to that. Drew says, Arcia and Urshela. You know, good on you. Uh, those players are, are who you get excited about. Phil said Snit Bear. I think that's the right answer. Uh, anytime you get a view of Snit Bear. Now, some more negative comments. Austin Gwynn says, I've never watched less Braves baseball than this season. It's borderline unwatchable. Probably could count on one hand the number of games I've watched since June 1st. And I feel like there are a lot of Braves fans out there with that view that this team is just unwatchable. Matt Karch, 839, says, only the pitchers, but the hitting is so hard to watch, it makes watching any of the game nearly impossible. Leland Hurt, who I know is an everyday or on here, says this team is hard to watch. And again, I think that is just an, an overwhelming feeling right now for a lot of Braves fans. Double A says he just likes pain and misery, and that's why he keeps watching. J Thad says, I'm not tuning in to watch anyone. I check the box score periodically and try and keep my blood pressure down too old for shenanigans strider cy young season says nobody i'm just an addict and i feel like that's a lot of us on here who just keep watching either because like double a they enjoy the pain and misery and just because we're an addict and we're going to watch regardless even though it's not fun uh chris birds all said they dvr the game fast forward through the offense that is certainly one way that you can go about it and go team yay sports says i'm checking scores i'm not watching i can't how they managed to turn this team into the dumpster fire it is, I'll never know. And before anyone mentions injuries, the guys who were and are injured weren't exactly lighting it up. This is a lost season. And look, I understand that the injuries are certainly a part of it. As I said earlier, it's not the entire part. And the guys who are injured, you know, Acuna even, weren't great 
while they were healthy. Now, Riley was finally getting it going. I've talked a lot about the fact that offense across Major League Baseball was suppressed in the first half. You know, if Acuna stays healthy and continues to play, do we see his offensive numbers go up? Like I said, Riley was getting it going. Olsen's been better of late. But Ozzy Albies, he certainly hasn't been himself. Michael Harris hasn't been himself. So, again, even the guys, when they have been healthy and been in the lineup, haven't been playing great either. So that is certainly a valid point. And then I like this one from Kathy Gold, kind of ending on a positive here. It says, watching every every game, because in this game that I love, you just never know. You never give up, love the underdog, and keep believing. 